I'm going to start with a blank page and end up with a complete interactive real-time digital filter built in LabVIEW. The heart of the filter will be the IIR filter structure and taking a tour of the inputs we see that we need to generate some filter coefficients and you have a number of filters to try out here. I'll select the Butterworth as just kind of a basic filter. And again it has a number of parameters for configuring the cutoff frequency and depending on whether or not you've selected a bandpass filter for example you can adjust the band width and so on. I'm creating some front panel controls to select the filter type and the filter order. And let's make sure that uh, the requirements for the frequencies are understood. Here we see that we have four different types of filters to choose from. We need to provide the sampling frequency and then a, a so-called high cutoff frequency and then a low cutoff frequency. And if you read this carefully, you see that everything is specified in terms of Hertz, ultimately. Um, more precisely, we could say that everything is specified as a ratio of the sampling frequency. So we can apply sampling frequency in Hertz and the remaining frequencies can also then be specified in Hertz. Again, if you prefer working with normalized frequency where sampling frequency corresponds to one, certainly you can specify your remaining frequencies that way as well. I'm going to put down a couple of front panel controls to manipulate the filter in terms of a cutoff frequency and a bandwidth. Now my bandwidth will be a multiplier uh, of my corner frequency and that sets the high frequency cutoff. Next I'm going to work on configuring the sound card for continuous output. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and grab the remaining uh, built-in sub-VIs that we need for the sound. Specifically, this is the sub-VI for sending samples to the sound card when we're all done. And just before exiting, then we call that sub-VI to clean up the sound card. And taking a tour of the configuration sub VI. I'll, I'll, since this one really doesn't need to change, it's just continuous samples. We don't need to change that to its alternative form. I'll just go ahead and leave that as a constant. Now in this case, we can specify the number of bits per channel or and uh, the sampling frequency. I, I would like to make that a front panel control. The cluster associated with sound format also includes the sampling frequency. So I will use unbundle by name to extract just the sampling frequency. And that's samples per second, so that would be sampling frequency in hertz. Now another input that we need to set up is the sam samples per channel. And essentially this is the number of samples we want to generate per block within our overall loop. So in the real-time mode, the filter will process one block 
of samples at a time, we need to do this in a repeated fashion. What I'm doing now is calculating the block size as some fraction or subset of one second. This is a convenient way for you to also set the rate at which our real-time loop is going to process. If you think about this a little bit and kind of work through the math, you'll find that if I divide my sampling frequency by 4, in this case, uh, taking uh, a specific number like 10 kilohertz, this would say that dividing it by 4 gives us 2,500 samples. So I'm saying that I have 4 blocks per second that we're processing. I'll move on to our signal source. You can use whatever signal source you like. For this demonstration I'll use the square wave since that has a fairly rich harmonic spectrum and that way we can see some variations when we apply our filter. A number of different inputs here. The square wave has a special requirement of normalized frequency and this is this is one you really have to be careful about you don't want to just plug in frequency in Hertz directly. I'll create a front panel control to set the frequency of the square wave and I'll call that F0. and F0 divided by my sampling frequency gives me normalized sampling frequency or excuse me normalized frequency for the square wave. If we leave the amplitude unwired then it defaults to a value of 1 and I'll just leave that. We need to specify the number of samples to generate and we match that to the block size and the filter coefficients sub vi also needs to know the sampling frequency. I'll take the output of my square wave and pipe that directly to the filter input. I would also like to conveniently be able to switch back and forth between listening to the source by itself or the filtered source and the two input selector here, or the uh, think of it as a multiplexer, will be able to pick whether or not we listen to the source only or whether or not we listen to the filtered result. I need to convert the array into the waveform data type before I can send that to the sound, sound card. I also need to specify my sampling interval, which would be the reciprocal of my sampling frequency. All right, at this point, I think we're ready to go ahead and wrap the critical structures inside a while loop, keeping all of the front panel controls that we need to be continuously interactive inside the, the while loop gives them the ability to be scanned periodically. And the sample size that we've, that we've calculated and then used to send blocks of audio to the sound card will dictate how fast the loop actually runs. So based on choosing the block size as sampling frequency divided by 4, the loop will update 4 times per second. Now the sound card configuration generates uh, a task ID, that's just an integer, 
and simply connect the task ID to all the other sound devices that need to know about the way that the sound card was configured. I'm also connecting the air cluster from the configure sound card to the, to the remaining sound oriented devices that have the air in and the air out. I'm going to use the triple display to show either the time domain waveform or perhaps more interestingly the spectrum of the waveform. And depending on how your triple display has been installed, you might need to change from a control to an indicator after you place it. And let me just reorganize the front panel here a bit. I'll also change the number of channels down to one. And let me begin with a square wave frequency of 500 hertz. I don't have audio enabled right now, otherwise we might be able to hear something. I just wanted to quickly check out the uh, spectrum view and the time domain view to make sure that things look okay. And there, there is the characteristic pattern of a square wave for the spectrum, so things are looking pretty good here. Perhaps we could try a different filter cutoff. And we start to see some of the higher harmonics being attenuated. And higher filter order will attend the, attenuate them even more. That looks good. Okay, let's try it with audio enabled on my capture. after the fact, specifying the bandwidth in hertz and say 100, which seems like it ought to be narrow band, but since I'm multiplying that by my corner frequency, that's saying the upper cutoff is 100 kilohertz, so I didn't do that quite right. Let me just call bandwidth kind of a, a multiplier of the, of the corner frequency. And that looks better. I'm going to swap out the corner frequency with the knob and I'm also going to use the logarithmic mapping style for the knob value. We'll give it a minimum value of 10 hertz and we can take this all the way up to 10 kilohertz. And that keeps us within the range of the spectrum plot. sweep through the harmonics and see additional harmonics being exposed there. Again, bandpass is only keeping some region in the middle. Now one of the things you've perhaps noticed so far is there's this persistent clicking in the background. And actually you'll know if you were to measure it, you'd see that it's a four hertz sort of clicking. It's doing it four times per second and it matches the rate at which our real-time loop is going. First thing I'll try adjusting is preserving the phase or ensuring that the phase is being um, kept continuous from one loop pass to the next. 
still hearing the clicking, so let's try the filter. Now the filter has an internal state for all of its delay elements and we need to make sure that the filter state is also preserved from one pass to the, to the next. Uh, without doing that, then it's continuously resetting the uh, values of, of the storage elements inside the filter. So you'll notice the feedback node gets uh, generated automatically when you do that. That sounds a lot better. Let's try a little lower frequency. Sounds pretty good.